<laughs> so yesterday we talked about maps and some features of maps. Today we're going to talk about globes. I love globes. Okay. So I want you to tell me, think for just a minute, and then I'm going to give you a chance to tell me the differences between a map and a globe. Okay, take okay, just a second to think about it. I already know. Okay, so they both are going to show us where we're going or show us a part of the earth. But you said a globe is round. And what about a map? It's like flat. It's flat, okay. But not fully flat, just mostly. Yeah, they're, they are flat. All right, Kenley? Um, a map only says a part of the world and a map. Okay. Usually maps are just part of the world. Now there are some maps that are the whole entire world, but most of the time maps are just going to show a smaller part. Okay, Jackson? Um, a map, a globe is a circle mm -hmm. and um, a map is like a rectangle. Okay. Pretty much yep, pretty much. It's not a circle, it's a sphere. Um, what I was going to say is, is they're made out of different Okay, made out of different materials. A map is made out of paper. That's made out of some. Okay. Weird type so a globe is a three-dimensional representation of the Earth. It's a sphere. A map is a two-dimensional representation. It's flat, usually a rectangular shape. Could be a little different though. Okay, Lily. Another one is that um, a map is on a little stand to keep it from rolling. Okay. All right. If I was going on a trip, would I need to take a map or a globe with me? Map. map. I can take a map with me, right? Or, but if I wanted a more accurate representation of exactly what the earth was like, I'd want to look at a globe. Why are globes more accurate than a map, Avery? Yeah, globes are the shape. Our earth is round, it's just like a globe is. So that makes globes a little more accurate. Maps have some distortion because they're taking a three-dimensional object and flattening it out to make it a two-dimensional flat object. <clears throat> All right, so let's talk about the earth. Yes? I don't think the earth is round. Okay, well... You, there's a lot of people that don't think that. Well, I know the okay, we're not going to get in an argument of whether the earth is round or flat. We're going to just learn about these lines that are on the globe, okay? So, here's the thing about globes. They have some lines on them. They're imaginary lines that aren't actually on the earth. But they are important things that we use to help us determine location. And it also divides the earth up into some different parts. So we're going to talk about that. The first imaginary center that we're going to talk about is called the axis. And here's the word axis. And the axis goes through the center of the earth. That's what the earth rotates on. So looking at this globe that I have here, here's my globe. I'm pretending that the axis goes from this little ball here to this little ball here. And that's what makes the earth, that's what the earth rotates around. Why do you think it needs that it rotates in the center instead of way over here on the side? Blake? If it rotated on the side, then one would be rotated more than the other. Yeah, exactly. So the axis is directly in the center, and that, that is how the earth rotates. It rotates in exactly the center of the earth around. So that goes through the middle. You can see this doesn't really have a bar in it, but you can see how it was holding 
holding this on and making it rotate through the middle, okay? So that's one of the imaginary lines <clears throat> that we can think about on a globe. The other, another imaginary line is called the equator. And the equator runs around the center of the earth. So here on this map, on this globe, is the equator. It goes all the way around the center here. Okay. The equator runs through the center of the earth at zero degrees latitude. Okay. So I'm gonna we're gonna talk about latitude and then the other another word in just a second. But I'm going to circle latitude. Latitude goes across like a ladder. Those are the lines that, that go sense. across. Okay, that I'm going to draw sense. kind of a ladder here. Okay, good. Okay, so latitude is like a ladder. The lines go across like the steps of a ladder. Okay, so the equator because it goes across this way, it divides the earth into two separate hemispheres or two equal parts. It divides it into the northern hemisphere that's above the equator and the southern hemisphere that's down here below the equator. Okay, does that make sense? That if it's going this way, that it would divide it into north and south. Okay, and that's the middle, so it's at zero degrees latitude. It's going across like the rungs or steps of a ladder. All right, then there's another imaginary line. And that imaginary line is called the prime meridian. And instead of the, this imaginary line going across, this one goes up and down, runs right through here. Okay. So it's called the prime meridian. It runs from the North Pole down to the South Pole. So if it's going this way, it's also splitting the Earth in half into two hemispheres. <coughs> It's splitting them into the west and east. So the equator separates the earth into north and south, where the prime meridian splits it into the east and west. Okay? So the prime meridian, we said is at zero degrees longitude and I remember that because the word longitude has long in it that's what it starts with and those lines are long going up and down that's just a little trick that I use to remember it okay I've never so let's talk about go back to the equator so the equator runs around the center of the earth. And here's something kind of cool about the equator. The equator, because it's the center of that sphere, is the closest point to the sun. So if it's the closest point to the sun, what do you think the surface temperature would be like at the equator? What are you thinking, Blake? hot. The closer you are to the equator, the warmer it is. So then the further you get away from the equator, what's going to happen? It's going to get cold. Yeah, so the closer you are to the equator, the hotter it is. The further you get away, the colder it's going to get. What is the northernmost point? on the globe or the earth what's the furthest point to the north 
Yeah. Way up here. What's this? The North Pole. The North Pole, exactly. What about the southernmost Shallow. point? Southern. Okay, thank you. South. Yeah, the southernmost point would be the South Pole. You're exactly right. All right, so remember the axis is that imaginary line that passes through the center. That's what the Earth rotates on. That's what kind of keeps it in position as it's rotating. Then the equator runs. Show me how the equator runs. Yeah, it goes around the center of the Earth, right? How about the prime meridian? It goes up and down around the lines of longitude, okay? And the prime meridian and the equator both split the earth into hemispheres or halves, or equal halves. All right, so we talked earlier about the differences in globes and maps. So why is a globe more accurate than a flat map? to represent the Earth's surface. What could I put here on why is a globe more accurate? Sorry. Blake? It um, has direct light. You could look at a country and it would tell you the states and cities and that. Okay. Not just like not just some of the cities or some of the states. Okay. So the globe is going to show you the whole entire Earth. What else, Connor? It's a circle that makes it more accurate. Yeah, it's a sphere. It's a three-dimensional sphere, just like the Earth is. So the scale is accurate, where when you take something round and you try to flatten it out, can I take a ball and cut it apart and make it flat? No. No, yeah, not without... But is it, can I spread it all out and make it completely flat? Yeah. It's going to have some distortion and some gaps. So people have to work very hard. So maps are a little bit less accurate. There are people who work very hard to make them as accurate as possible. But they're a little less accurate than a globe because globes are the actual same shape as the Earth. So... What is the name of the line, the imaginary line that the Earth rotates on? What's that called? It goes through the center of the Earth and the Earth rotates around it. The axis, good. What's the name of the imaginary line that divides the Earth into the north and south? Equator, very good. So the equator, is it at zero degrees longitude? zero degrees latitude or 180 degrees longitude. Remember, latitude is like the ladder, the steps on a ladder. So, it's actually zero degrees latitude. It's zero, it's the middle, so it's zero degrees latitude. And it tells you that if you go back when you're on your page, if you need to go back on the page that talks about the globe lines, it actually tells you that. But remember, latitude's like a ladder, wrong. It goes this way, so that'll help you. Okay, then the prime meridian, is it the imaginary line at zero degrees longitude? Zero degrees latitude? or 180 degrees longitude? Zero degrees longitude. It's the long lines that go from the top to the bottom. Okay? So the prime meridian is the one that goes long way, splits it into the eastern and western hemisphere. So, because it's going from north to south, it's dividing which two directions? I just told you. Eastern and Western. The Eastern and Western. Okay. What is the northernmost point of the Earth's axis? The very top. North Pole. North Pole. Southernmost point is the South Pole. South Pole. 
All right. Which imaginary line runs all the way around the Earth? The equator. What happens to Earth's surface as you travel further away from the equator? The further away I get, what happens? It gets colder. The surface temperature gets colder. All right, any questions about this? All right. I want you to get signed into Google Classroom.